Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the webinar series. Uh, this is Matt Hill uh, from Benro USA. And with me today, I have the amazing Eduardo Angel. Eduardo, say hello. Hello. <laughs> so I, I have I have so much to say about Eduardo. Um, but this webinar was born from a conversation that he and I were having. And that's we, we liked the conversation that we had so much that we decided that it was important to share it with you. Yep. Uh, so uh, a little backstory. You might notice that Ed Eduardo and I are friendly. That's because we've been friends for a long time. Uh, a long time. A long time. Yeah, we've, we've known each other years. We're not going to count them, but years. Uh, more than a decades. Almost. More than um, yeah. <laughs> so Who said we're counting? But um, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's important to say that uh, my respect for Eduardo is, is hard to measure. Uh, the things that he's accomplished uh, are extraordinary. And his ability to to work on new ideas and then make them happen is something I've admired for a long time. So it's Thank a pleasure and, and an honor to talk with you today, Eduardo. Thank you very much. Thank um, oh, thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. Uh, today, uh, so just a, a brief intro. The reason that we are talking about this today was Eduardo and I were talking about his program called One Person Crew. And his program is, is centered around one philosophy. And why don't you tell us briefly what that is, Eduardo? Well, the one person crew is about doing more with less. And less means less resources, less people, less gear, less time, less money. And my hope is that we can talk about why that is so relevant nowadays. But that was not created because of the COVID or, or, or anything like that. I, I started this project without the proper one person crew name like four years ago when my wife and I decided to take a break from New York and from all the things we were doing and travel around the world. And the idea was to do it for six months that later became 12 months and then ended up being 18 months. And during that journey to 20 countries, 200 cities, I realized that if I wanted to capture the stories that we were encountering all over, uh, I had to downsize my gear and streamline my workflow because I was working by myself and we were traveling with carry-ons, each one carry-on each and one like laptop backpack for a year and a half. So while doing the research on like, okay, what is the least amount of uh, like uh, sound recording gear you need and, and or what is the, what are the most versatile but smaller, lighter lenses that I can get? I realized that there were, there was, there, were, there wasn't a good place uh, to find that information and that were bits and pieces all over the place in different forums on Facebook and Twitter and many different places. So during my journey, I started compiling all these, all these lessons and tips and tricks and things that I was learning and a lot of mistakes that I, that I was making that I still make. And the one person crew as a platform was created. And since then, that's the place where I share with others all the interesting things that that we keep learning every every single day literally amazing now folks we, we have we're gonna we're gonna have a conversation and i'll show you what the the structure of today is going to be um but uh eduardo has a, a pretty deep website called and you can see it on his shirt one person the number one person crew dot com number one person crew <laughs> yeah number one person the number one the number one crew com uh, we'll, we'll post some links and stuff in the chat. Um, if you want to read a lot and subscribe, that's a great place to start. Um, but here, stick with us. This is going to be a live conversation. It is being recorded. So give us your full attention. If you have questions, please leave it in the chat. We're going to have some breaks for questions. We love questions. Ask all of the questions you want to ask. We do. And um, we're going to, we're going to, we have structure. So we're going to go through and talk about three different topics. Uh, and then we're going to take it to its natural place after that. Um, but, but most of all, uh, I think, I think I just want to talk a little bit about why people should, um, uh, understand where you're coming from or what they should understand mm -hmm. where you're coming from. What, what are the stages of 
vocation in your life that you've gone through prior to this? <laughs> well, do we have how many hours do we have? <laughs> you have three minutes or less. <laughs> so I started my professional life as an architect. Then that, and one day I woke up uh, and realized that I was working really hard to make money, to go places, to take pictures. And then one day it clicked that maybe this is what I should be doing instead. And I got an MFA in photography. Then I moved uh, to Chicago where I combined the two things I knew how to do, which is architectural photography, which makes sense. And that was right at the transition between like when, when digital, when digital transformation was happening. So there was no one really like who knew like what, what was going on, how to shoot with digital bags and color workflow, raw workflow, all that stuff. And so I started learning because I, I like those kind of things. And I learned enough to get a job in New York as a, like a technical consultant for, for several years. And after that, I left and I started getting more into video with the 5D and like the whole revolution that everybody's fully aware of. And I started getting more and more and more and more. And to the point that a few years later, I started working on bigger productions with bigger crews and bigger budgets. I ended up getting uh, winning an Emmy as a director of photography. And that, of course, opened the floodgates for even bigger projects with bigger budgets with bigger crews. And at one point, I realized that I was kind of like back to the beginning. I was like working, 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 working nonstop, making really good money and a lot of like professional success. But I was further away from my craft, which was telling stories and, and doing like little projects and like more like handmade. So that's when I took the, the break. And, and since then I have been working on much smaller projects and often as a one person crew. So that's, that's kind of like the whole, the whole story. That's great. And like I said, I, I've admired your, your tenacity and your, your ability to pivot all along the way. Um, we have, uh, we're going to run through this a little bit. So the topic of today, because you all set up for it, was turning challenges into opportunity. Yep. And I have to say that this is attitudinal. This is, this is something you have to choose to do. And we're going to talk more about that. Also, you can see, I know I, I did this, Eduardo didn't do it. It might be a gratuitous, <laughs> but I put, put a picture of him grabbing his Emmy there. So <laughs> I like the picture. It makes me happy. I do too. So uh, there's a there's a quick video to show you guys. Um, this is about a minute, uh, and this gives you an overview about what Eduardo does, just to, to really button up where he comes from. Awesome. So uh, that just shows him in work. Um, and I want to make it clear, if if you're watching this, we designed this for photographers who are transitioning into video or established filmmakers that are working with small crews, all kinds of content creators, plus anyone else who wants to make money creating powerful videos with very little gear. And I know that there weren't any planes flying over where you were yesterday when we did our preparation for this. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's I okay. Know. I don't know why. That's the, way, why. The, the, the wind changed. It's true. It's true. Uh, that means business is happening. That's great. Uh, what we're going to cover today, here's the structure. We covered this already. Who's Eduardo, right? And what's the one-person crew approach? We already crossed that off the list, right? And then we have three topics that we're going to dive into. We're multiple haps, shrinking marketing budgets, and working safely on site. Mm -hmm. And then essential gear, and then how you can continue learning with Eduardo. So let's, let's start with the basic assertion here. You could choose to view boundaries, boundaries, things that don't allow forward progress as roadblocks. You could say, eh, I can't do anything because this thing's in my way. Or you could say that's an opportunity to change the narrative. And I phrased it that way on purpose because narrative is everything when you're doing any act of filmmaking. Creation of marrying audio with video and something that has a timeline, it is a narrative. You have to tell a story within the start and the end of that. So right. your, your attitude has everything to do with how you view things that get in your way. And, and there's also something that I believe is pretty much always true. There, there is always the flip side of everything. And, and it's true to, to in investments, like when, when a company goes bankrupt, other companies benefit from that. When someone uh, just, uh, a, a, a door opens, another one closes for someone else or in other way. So the way I try to see things is like, okay, this, this situation seems like a challenge, seems like a roadblock, but what's the other side? What's the flip side of this? Like who can benefit from this situation or how can I benefit from this? Or how can I take, how can I learn from this? How can I apply new, new lessons uh, moving forward? And, and there is always a silver lining on every single, every single challenge is an opportunity. Truth, truth, and and to avoid the the risk of uh, acting as if it's a platitude, we're, we're going to give you some examples of how we have done that. Yeah. So, um, our first, I guess, challenge would be anybody who says it's a hassle to wear so many hats on a production. Ah, oh, I'm tired. This is hard. That's why there's so many people to do this. It takes a village to make a video. Eduardo, how do you feel about this? Um, I believe it's it's very hard. It, it is it is very hard. It is very challenging to, especially when you're on location shooting and you're trying to concentrate on so many moving pieces, right? So you're making sure that, the, like, for example, like yesterday I was asking questions from the subject, but at the same time, I'm keeping an eye on the battery and checking exposure and monitoring sound and moving the camera and what's, what I'm, I'm supposed to ask next. Uh, there are a lot of moving pieces, but there are also a lot of opportunities because every single skill you learn is gonna inform and enhance other skills. So they are all interconnected and you can play different games, right? So uh, we briefly talked uh, during, our, during our original conversation how I am not a video editor. I don't, con I do edit and I like it. I enjoy editing, but there are much better skilled people than, 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 than me. But when this uh, situation, the lockdown happened, I had the opportunity to help other people setting up remote uh, editing workflows and teaching other people uh, getting up, up, up and running or on, on Premiere Pro, for example. So that's not my primary role, but because I have been doing it for so long and it's something I enjoy, I can share that knowledge with other people. Right. So uh, it's definitely an advantage. and and. One example that I always give to my students is, especially the ones that want to be directors of photography, DOPs, is you need to learn how to edit. And they're like, no, I'm a director of photography. I, I don't, I'm not an editor. I'm gonna work with an editor. Like, yeah, true, that's, 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 that's fantastic. But only when you understand what the editor needs, then you start thinking 
uh, as, as an editor. Like you can be shooting, you can be the DOP, but then you're gonna be shooting less of what you don't need, more coverage of the things you might need later. You're gonna be more efficient and uh, it definitely, it's, it's gonna definitely help. A director, for example, uh, doesn't need to know anything about how the camera works. And I know several directors that don't know anything about cameras. But if you understand how lenses work uh, and like how different like a, a wide angle lens versus long lens or like lighting works, you're gonna be a better director. Uh, there, there's no question about it. And so wearing multiple hats is hard. There's no, no, <laughs> there's no way to, to sugarcoat it. But every single skill you earn is going to make you stronger at something else. Oh, I completely agree with that. And I, I think we, we both read the same book at different times and, and reinforced. I, I know I, I held this belief prior to reading the book, but it reinforced my feelings about that and my, my understanding of how things are connected. Um, the, the book that we both read is called uh, The Conversations by Fantastic. Michael by Michael Andachi. Uh, we can flash it on the screen here for you guys. Um, it's It was written about conversations between Michael Andachi and uh, Walter Murch. Uh, and the the book title is, is a pluralization of one of Walter's seminal movies called The Conversation with Gene Hackman. And, and Walter's main point of view in that was that he started as a sound editor and then he became a film editor and he which, believed which is not normal that's not a normal transition no absolutely not uh, and 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 he believed that that plus many of the other things that he does he's considered a renaissance man yeah. he's interested in many things that are not directly connected to film film editing or sound editing or sound design he believes that all of the things that he does has informed his decisions that he makes while performing his profession and and this book blew me away and and it informed everything i did going forward it actually allowed me as an artist to release judgment when i'm making art to say you know what i don't have an end goal in mind when i'm making something a particular kind of art i'm just going to make it for the joy of making yeah. and the destination is the journey and and that right there just allowed me um to say to let everything else filter in instead of worrying about setting boundaries as a goal for a project to say i'm just going to let everything else come in and be a part of it until it's done and it's bled into other things in my life especially uh, i i did film editing uh for a while too i still do it uh you know for commercial stuff but i've edited a feature film once too and that helped me a lot uh, during that time. And I got to go on set and this is what you're talking about. Um, I got to go on set and I saw the actors doing what they're doing. I saw the DP doing what they're doing. I got to be there for script revision with the, the director. Um, right. And it was a problem too. And I got, I got, I got to say that um, it, it was, I, I, and I'll finish my story in a second. I just, I got on the, this, I think it's an important tangent. Um, I, it was, I had a problem with that. I had a personal connection to the actors because I was present and we all slept in the same house and it was, I was there for like four days of filming and, and I had a separate relationship with them versus the one that I should have, which is only within the boundaries of the edit window and take being the primary caretaker of the story as the editor. Mm. And, and that affected me and I had to divorce myself from those things as much as possible in the, the feelings and knowledge I had about the actors outside of the roles as actors. Which is interesting because that's one of the reasons why I enjoy working with editors, with video editors. And especially now that I'm living in Lisbon, I work with a fantastic video editor with Bruno. And he, he, not, he not only is very fast, way faster than, than, than I could ever be, but he is not connected emotionally to the footage. So I... Uh, if I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and it was freezing cold and I was so hungry and I waited for hours for sunrise and I got that shot and the slider didn't work and all these problems and then I'm, I, I, I have to use the shot. I have to use that clip, right? Like it, right. it was so painful to get. And like he, he would like, no, 
doesn't work. It's not part of the story. It's out or, or yeah, or out yeah. of like whatever, 30 seconds, we're going to use three seconds. That's what we need. Right. And that's so good for the story because what matters is the story, not how early I woke up or how, how pain and how much pain I had to endure to get that shot. It, what matters is, is this moving the story, the story forward or not? And that's what a photo editor or a video editor brings to the table. And I, it's priceless. Yes, that, that emotional detachment from Absolutely. the creative or the creation of the creative. I totally agree. Um, and, and this comes around to all of the things you've had to do to become a one-person crew. Our, our main point in this first discussion topic is that um, it's an advantage instead of a disadvantage to have to wear all of the hats on a production. And we just talked about editing, which is after you're done shooting, right? right. You, can, you can always send out for that. That's great. But if, if you're the one person that can show up, wear, being able to wear all of the hats to some degree of, of, uh, of ability is very important to understand how to make all of it happen and say, uh, this still has value and there's less risk because there's only one person showing up. And, and you can you can play different roles so like it, it, it's just so wonderful to be able to go to a location and then plan the shots uh, so basically you are the producer in that, in that in that instance or the director and then you're actually shooting that and then you're editing the shots and then you're playing with music and sound and so you're also uh, the composer in a way and you're informing and, and for clients that's a huge value added when sure. you can actually bring a lot to the table and streamline the process and it, it definitely is a huge advantage to, to cover many different roles absolutely it's uh it's that's that's one of the things that i i've liked about hearing reading all of your blog posts as they come out is is seeing that when somebody says, hey, can you do a job? This might be hard. We have concerns. Your response is, listen, it's not something you have to worry about. I can do it all. Let's talk about what's feasible right. and, and what's a stretch. And don't worry about the rest. I got this. Yeah. Uh, and that's that That I find. Um, if, if I needed you, I would hire you. Because, <laughs> so. Especially, like, if, I mean, even before COVID, it, 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 with travel restrictions and, and, and how expensive sometimes it is yeah. to, to hire a crew and like move a crew to four or five different countries, it can get really expensive, like well, moving seven people, ten people around. That takes when us to our one, next point. Okay, let's 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 get there. It, it is our next there, point. Perfect. Perfect. Marketing budgets keep shrinking and deadlines keep getting tighter. Please continue. <laughs> well, what, one of the challenges with digital is that a lot of clients, especially new, like without a lot of experience, think that because it's digital is is instant. Is it's like you can you just press a button and it's like, oh, it comes a video like fully 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 matured and you know everybody knows it's not true. Right. So. But the deadlines sometimes are very, very tight. And working as a one-person crew has the disadvantage that certain things take longer, but at the same time, you don't have any red tape to go through. You are not waiting for anyone else to do certain things. And you can make, your, like, once you make one decision, you're making that decision as four, four different people making the one decision because right. you are you are you are doing that um for example a, a very clear example is setting up uh, i have done a lot of like corporate interviews so even if i'm trying to be as efficient as possible it still takes a little bit longer by myself to set up the lights, to set up the cameras, to make sure to test it, the sound, to make sure everything is, 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 is going, it's gonna be perfect, have a backup plan. It obviously takes me longer than if I had two or three or four people helping me. But once um, when the show is on 
and I'm manning the camera and asking the questions and, and I know my lighting, I know what, what, what to expect from the cameras, then it's, it's flawless. It just goes very, very nicely and I'm not waiting for someone else to do anything. And the same with all the tutorials, all the educational content that I create, I set up things in a way that it takes me a little bit longer to set up, but once I'm set up, I don't need anybody else. I'm controlling all the devices by myself, the camera, the lights, the microphones, and I'm downloading everything and editing. So it, 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 it comes with a lot of freedom to be able to do that. I think you just answered uh, Nuno's question. Don't you feel like, don't you feel the need for an extra pair of hands sometimes? Yeah, so sometimes, sometimes yes, and but sometimes it takes the, the time it's gonna take to explain someone the way you work, explain how this is gonna work, or how the client likes certain things, especially if you are. In a, in a foreign country, meeting someone like a gaffer or a grip or someone else for the first time. Right. That's, I mean, it's, it's such a steep learning curve and, and to understand each other technically what we're looking for, that that extra pair of hands, it's not really that, it's not really cutting time or saving, saving that much time. So. Right. So when, when do you think the time savings, is it like, it might be hard to put a number on, but I want to ask you, is there a number of people or a certain kinds of people that that the extra investment in time to manage and communicate with them makes makes the it, it worth it? And I'm not I don't mean uh, that you don't think it isn't. I'm no, no, I, I, a... I, I totally get it. And I, I think it also depends on what each person's strengths are. Right. Like if you are really a really good editor you're very fast editing well you don't need an extra hand with that right. but for example i don't like producing i do it but i don't like production i don't like the scheduling i don't i don't enjoy the process of making the phone calls arranging locations booking right. hotels i don't like it i do it but if i could have that person to take over the production oh my god that would be a blessing but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I feel you. But it also depends. Other people love, like producers, all, most producers love production. So they, they probably would get a, a hand doing something else. So it really depends on, 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 on your, your strengths. Right. Uh, okay. So they, the heart of the matter here is they, they want me to do more for less money. Yeah. That's, you know? that's, that's a classic problem. And the, the one person crew approach is, doing more with less, but that doesn't mean doing more for less. And sure, like part of the value added that you bring to the client is, listen, you are, you are not flying seven people. We don't need seven hotel rooms, and that, which means two cars and 21 meals per day. That's, that's, so we can save some of that money, but someone still needs to to like work on the script. Someone needs to shoot, someone needs to edit, someone needs to do location scouting. So those jobs are still gonna get done. And the value of the project is the same. So we can save a little bit on expenses, but that doesn't mean that you are just like splitting the budget by seven and that's that's the new budget. That's that's totally unrealistic. Yep, yep, I, I love it. I love it how this, you can just turn it on its ear. The, the budgets are less, so cut the expenses down and the project's still worth the same the amount of money. The project is the same. Yeah. And it, I, I would even, in, in many situations, like the, the travel and lifestyle projects I work on, they are actually stronger because they have one voice. And, yeah. and there, there's, there's, no, there's no misunderstandings between one step and the next. Yep. Yep. Now, you, you, I... I I guess I talked about the last book too. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about this one. Um, I, there's been a couple of things that, that I've read that just, um, that helped me, uh, that infused in my life. Uh, this is one that, that I read during an alt MBA course and it's called the beautiful constraint. And this is, uh, definitely complementary to the heart of the matter that we're talking about here. I recommend that everybody out there, 
try and grab either. It's a beautifully printed book if you get the the paper version, or nice. the ebook. The content is also extraordinary. Um, it's 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 all about ways to train your brain to see things that are commonly seen as disadvantages as beautiful constraints just like you describe it differently in your brain and suddenly other opportunities open up and yeah. it sounds frou-frou until you actually do it and you see that you are able to do more by just changing your mind about a situation <laughs> and, and people we have a situation now don't we how, how is how is the book formatted? Is it like interviews or like they 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 have several different problems and they analyze each problem or, or how there's is... a there's a lot of case studies in it, a lot okay. a lot of case studies in there. They they did a lot of research uh, from people abroad across a broad spectrum of life pursuits and vocations. Wow! And provide examples about how people how people chose to adopt a beautiful constraint. You know, as 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 the opportunity uh, instead of the disadvantage. There, there was, uh, when we could fly uh, a few months ago, I watched a movie on a plane. I don't remember exactly the title, but if I remember, I'll, 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 I'll send it to you. And it was about seven or eight uh, very accomplished professionals in very different fields, uh, athletes and business people and all these kind of things. Right. And they were interviewing them about how, like, are you naturally, like, gifted? Like, are you, were you born like this? And actually, all of them were on paper not suited for what they actually end up doing. Like, they were not as fast as the other kids or they were not as they couldn't read as well or they they had like learning disabilities or something else so because they had those challenges they found hacks shortcuts they they made other parts of their brain and their body stronger and that became their superpower which was absolutely amazing and that's what uh, Carrincha, I think it was the name of the uh, soccer player from Argentina who played with the, with the left, like his, his strongest leg was, was uh, his left leg. And he, he played in a very weird way. He looked like he was dancing all the time. And that was a problem, right? Like you're not supposed to, to play soccer like where you cannot even walk very well. Right. But that was so confusing to the other players that he what was legs incredible. Doing? Yeah. What are his legs yeah. doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, what is he doing? What is he going? So that is, I think, totally in, in, in line with the book, and which I haven't read, but I will. It's on my library yeah. queue. And... Uh, and, and that's that's true for all of us. Like we all have certain skills, technical skills, or people skills, or different things that we can develop. And the weaknesses that we have, like this guy, like right. who couldn't really walk or run very well, uh, then he developed something else that became his superpower. And yeah. and that's applicable like to all aspects of life, I believe. I agree. And I, I recently did a, just a, I, I got a job, uh, locally, uh, which, which I wasn't even fishing for, but they hired me because, um, not only do I do repro work, but I also make video. So, um, what they wanted was to have these reproductions made, but also to have some small videos walking around the pieces so that they could have better marketing on their website. Cause obviously, we're less face-to-face -face connected now. So e-commerce is becoming a really important thing. It was important. It's most important right now. So um, having those two skills together was was exactly the epitome of what you're saying. Uh, was They chose me because of that, because they could get both. Hmm. And I, I, I looked them in the eye. I said, can you do this? I said, yes. Can you do that? Yes. And I said, how about this too? And they're like, oh, didn't know about that. So the more, the more things you can feel confident about doing and stacking, uh, the more valuable you are. But that doesn't Absolutely. mean you don't discount. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the, the job is the same. And, and in this case, same. you're doing two jobs. It's like the, yep. 
the stills and the video, they are completely different jobs. Yep. And like, no, don't discount. Yep. Doing doing more with less doesn't mean for less. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the elephant outside the room. <laughs> <laughs> in the room, the room, outside the room, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Our biggest constraint right now yeah. is that large groups of people are unsafe to gather and filmmaking essentially has been a group project it is it is not the domain of solo operators except for documentarians right. and people like you who have who've chosen to see the benefits of doing it for whatever reasons not not as a, a rejection of something but as an embracing of something so let's let's riff on this for a little bit and talk about how um how covid can be an advantage and I'm not saying that it's a good thing. COVID's not a good thing, but being resilient yeah. and and being able to pivot are very important things, especially during times like this. And, and we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, let, let's say we find a vaccine in six months or something like that. I don't think this is going to be a one-time deal. I don't think this is going to be the last... The, the last uh, and then if we see or like there are so many other things that, that can happen and in addition to that traveling is going to be harder than before for sure like baggage baggage fees are going to increase or they, they are they have already increased well we're not paying attention um i'm looking at you american airlines and then uh, traveling is going to be harder so the less people you have to move, the less gear you have to drag with you, the better. I mean, the more efficient it's going gonna, it's gonna to be. And definitely, I, I have been getting all the production protocols from different, different places, from Lisbon, Atlanta, LA, New York, and all these things. And they are somewhat related, but they're also very different. And right. I don't even know how can they actually enforce those things. Like how often can you clean the gear? What's right. going to happen with rental equipment? When you go and rent the lens, like how, for how long is that right. lens going to be out of circulation? How are going to they, they, I don't, I don't, it's going to be right. such a mess. Right. So working with less, being more resourceful and with less people faster, more efficient is going to be, is, is here to stay for sure. Right. And providing maximum value with minimum risk. Yeah. The fewer people involved, the, the, the less contact there is, you know, and, and it's, it's just math, right? It is. I mean, it is. And, and also, we, we talk, the, the, the slide also mentioned the marketing budgets. I mean, right. there are many, 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 many companies that are not doing well. Right. So you... They don't have the luxury just to throw money uh, right. on, on, on marketing. Just, right. So who's going to get the job? The person who can get the job done more efficiently and right. not the person who needs just two Alexas or two Reds just to just to start the conversation. Right. So um, so that's, that's the new reality. Now, you told me, we were talking about this yesterday, and you said that... Um, bad weather it, the the one person crew has a huge advantage when it comes to bad weather and that's because of the extra cost of transporting people around right yeah and well and, and and not only bad weather but you can move much more quickly you know right. like you you have a plan b a classic example i was doing these very large i was working with a very large crew and for whatever reason the that was a couple of years ago and the 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 location we had uh, secured for lunch for whatever reason was unavailable and there was nothing else in town right so right then and there you have 40 people waiting and they are not gonna continue working if you don't feed them uh, so it's just like what do you do uh, where do you find like where do you find lunch for 40 people and now we have to right. reschedule. Okay, right. let's go home. We lost half a day. Uh, with a very small crew, two or three people, you can move very quickly. Like if there is bad weather, you can come back the next day. You can, you can stay another day. Um, on one of my 
my, my most recent courses, I talk about my perfect week and how when I, I'm doing like a, like a one gig, one week gig, I like to schedule two days for shooting, one day for editing and one day off. And that day off is if everything goes perfect according to the plan, I actually just take it off. Like I go and sightseeing and whatever. But if something happened between like in, in the first couple of days, right. then that's that's um, that's a wonderful way to reshoot or or get additional content without affecting the rest of the schedule. So and that's so much harder when you're manning. I don't know. 20, 30, 40, 50 people. Right. Hey, you're shooting right now, aren't you? You took a break from that to talk with us. <laughs> this is the break? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I am, I am, I just finished my ninth and tenth uh, online filmmaking courses for LinkedIn Learning. And today I started shooting the 11th. So we are at the wow. location where I am shooting the 11th uh, course, which happens to be one person crew uh, tips and tricks. That's it's going to be, it's all about, it's going to be all about tips and tricks for the one person crew approach. When do you think that one will come out? Well, that's, uh, that's definitely Q4. So it's, it's definitely most likely first week of October. The, the, the previous ones have been delivered. So mm -hmm. we're looking at three to four weeks before they go live. Oh. So first week of September and and then this one that I'm shooting now today I started it uh, should be first week of October. Aha. So if people want to know how to get to that I'm just going to say it now like how how can they do that? Should we send them to your website? Well, onepersoncrew.com, one number one personcrew.com. It has all Post the it in info. the chat. Uh, or uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn Learning, and just look for for my name, and then all the all the courses are there. And the eight previous courses, the ones that are that are live, have re have been watched by last time we counted like nine hundred and fifty thousand people from one hundred and twenty countries. Amazing. So that's that's pretty interesting. Amazing. I have seen. I think I've seen two of your courses, um, and I have to go watch the rest now. I'm going to post up that link also. Uh, so, Eduardo, straight to your your LinkedIn learning page. I just posted that up. Yeah, thank so, you. Why don't you show us, um, since you are in the one-person crew mindset, <laughs> what gear are you using right now to not only do this stream but record? Can you turn your oh, camera around? So the, the stream? Yeah, it's very, it's very easy. Let's see if I can... Ooh, we got a tour. We got a tour. This, this is I wasn't expecting this. <gasps> but let's see if I can move without breaking. Well, anything. thank you for accommodating my curiosity. <laughs> Actually, what, one of the one of the tips that I, I, I don't think I'm gonna be including that on the on the on the course, but a great uh, approach is to rent an Airbnb and somewhere awesome. And then you can stay at that location and also use it as your studio. So you don't so, have to set up and break down all the time. Exactly. You just set up. And then the way I like to set up always is that they don't interrupt, like the gear doesn't interrupt the normal flow of things. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, well, we're in the kitchen. So this is the camera view mm -hmm. and very simple approach my, oh, look at that my bandro tripod and my little salamonic mic very nice oh, cool and then in, in this case i'm using the gh5 because i am testing hlg uh, which is the last blog post on one person crew is uh, hybrid log gamma and now here i have two lights and here i have another light and this is the non light the mix panel 60 and the way I like to set these things up is I'm going to be sitting here. So I'm going to turn. And without moving from my actual, like from this place, I can control uh, my, this is the, an external monitor recorder. 
that is connected to the camera. So I can start and stop the camera. I can check the framing. I can check exposure. And then I, I can also control sound. And I'm also monitoring sound at the same time. I can control the lights. I can change the uh, uh, color temperature and the brightness. And the so the, the view from my from my my seat looks like this. And the reason I have three lights is I'm not using the three lights at the same time. It's because I want to get this background, which is pretty bright right now. But depending on the time of the day, I might use one or two, like the, the two on this side or this one here, depending on how the sun is hitting the room. And because this next course, the one I started shooting today, is one video per week. Uh, they don't have to match the lighting. So I can do one video today at 10 a.m. and then tomorrow at 3 p.m. And, and as long as the video matches the light, is fine. And in terms of other tools, I have my, my, my most essential is my light meter here, my color meter, uh, the color checker video. So I can put it in front of the camera and check my wave, waveform, especially critical when I'm shooting H H HLG, which is like shooting log and the, the transmitter. So the cool thing about this approach is that without moving, I can control everything. I can control the lights, I can control the camera, I'm monitoring sound, I'm doing everything. And because, so it took me a few hours to set up everything. And also, even though I'm here by myself, I like to keep everything like very neat. Like all you see all the cables and everything else, because it's good, it's good practice. You know, like I can be, this can be like a complete mess, but then you start getting sloppy. And when I'm working with other people or the client shows up, Right. then you have a problem. So it's, it's, it's good practice to keep everything like very nice and organized. Makes and the way, so it took me a few hours to set this up, uh, but now it's not going anywhere. It's not moving. So I'm going to be here for like, say like a week uh, shooting. And because of the lighting setup, I can shoot at like any time of the day. And the, the approach is going to be I have very clear, oh, something else I didn't show you is something that you don't see because I don't use it is a teleprompter and which is not common. It's not normal. Normally you would have a teleprompter here or closer right. to the light. I only have the bullet points or the titles of the movies and the way I approach all my educational content is I have to understand it really well so I can explain it. And it, so I practice, I practice, I read, and I, I do it on, on my own until I get it very, very clearly in a way that I can explain it without having to read from a teleprompter. Um, so if I, don't, if I don't fully understand it, then I'm not going to uh, explain it. And so this, this is a great setup. And, and my, my typical workflow is I, in the morning, I, after two or three cups of coffee, then I, I work on one of the videos and I write the main ideas and until I get it very, very tight and then jump in front of the camera, turn everything on, do one or two takes and then take the I'm shooting from the camera into the external recorder. So I'm shooting into solid state drives, ProRes LT for those uh, geeks uh, attending. And then I take the SSD, connect it to the computer, and I start editing right away. I don't need to transcode. I don't need to download. I don't need to do anything. And it's a really efficient workflow. That's great. That, and that dovetails right into... Um, since we were talking about gear and you're kind enough to take us on a tour, um, you're, you're the thread throughout this whole thing is how to do more with less. That is the one person yeah. crew mantra, right? Yeah. So, so we prepared this for you guys that are watching. Um, Eduardo has two columns here. One is must have gear and one's nice to have gear. Why don't you walk us through that? Yeah. So, and 
before I forget, all this gear that you see here, the lights, the, the cameras, all the things, I carry that myself, like one person. I, the, in my bag and the two shoulder bags with the lights and the tripod is another shoulder bag and that's it. So I could technically take public transportation with all this gear if I wanted to. That's amazing. So, so that's a really good way to, to work. Going back to the slide, uh, the most have gear is especially, this is especially critical for photographers just getting into video. Sound is such an important part of video, of making movies that, but as photographers, you don't think about sound because you don't have to. So the number one on the list is getting a good microphone. And I have several articles on that, on which ones to get when I'm comparing six microphones side by side and six different lavalier mics and all these things. But getting a really good microphone is absolutely essential because half jokingly, I always say that if everything goes completely wrong, but you have good sound, at least you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. But without sound, uh, there is nothing. The second one on the must have uh, is a gimbal. Uh, especially for the kind of photography that I, for the kind of uh, visuals that I, that I create and stories I tell, um, because it's very small, very compact, and you can do a lot with a gimbal. Uh, the other two tools are either a video monopod, a compact uh, monopod with a fluid head, and or a, a travel tripod, the, the, the kind that you can remove one of the legs and then disattach and reattach the head and then it becomes a video monopod that's a very great uh wonderful way to to, to travel and the filters is absolutely essential a, a reflector something like this a five in one whatever is whatever it's called four in one six in one uh silver gold uh, and translucent absolutely wonderful it works every single time and another recommendation for most half gear is fast cards and or solid state drives for the simple reason that, for example, most of what I shoot now, now is 4K and not be, I'm outputting it as HD, but just as you, as you saw, I only, I'm only using one camera and the framing is wide enough that because it's 4k then i can crop it in post and i get two in one i get two cameras in one because i'm outputting it as hd i think 20 by 1080. so a fast card to capture 4k is is really important also less download time and less upload time and solid state drive to work it's just gonna make your life so much better can i add something there what Absolutely. is what uh, perhaps it's been explained other places, but it seems to be an advantage of shooting 4K and then uh, punching in to HD to have two different shots is that you can light for one camera instead of two cameras also. That, that too, like what I'm doing right now. And, and, and you are not, you don't have to worry about two cameras. So for, for interviews, for example, I do use two cameras, one on a wider lens and one on a no longer lens, but then you effectively get four cameras. That's a lot of coverage for two cameras. No kidding. So, yeah. so, so it's, 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 really, it's really great. But for this kind of educational content with only one camera, uh, you get two shots in one and there's exactly the same lighting. So right. lighting continuity, um, Right. less less everything less hard drive space right. less less workflow nice to have the list is endless of course but what i consider essential in this case for example the external monitor recorder is great because i can see exactly what i'm getting and sometimes like this morning when i was setting up the softbox was like half half of an inch in the frame like i wouldn't be able to just go check the ca check the camera come back and uh, the background my hair whatever like it's very great uh, it's a very great tool also recording into the solid state drive 
is a godsend for, yep. for, for efficiency, for speed. A, a motorized slider is really interesting. I have a very small one and it works really well, especially for like for time lapses and for corporate interviews, music videos, it works really, really well. And the, the lights that you're seeing here, they're all LED, all bicolor, and they all can have a, you, you can attach a battery to them. Otherwise, I'm not even looking into, like, I'm not even considering a light that is not bicolor and have uh, the option to have a battery because often I'm working at remote locations where I don't want to worry about bringing right. 200 batteries. Uh, so that's, and the last one is grip and gear, lighting and shaping tools. Um, a, a, a great a great tool that I, I have here, but in the other room is a, a shower curtain from, from Ikea is three or four dollars. And that's a fantastic way to diffuse light. So that was another approach that I that I considered, but didn't didn't really uh, work for these. Is you put the two LED lights like at full power, bare bulb through the shower curtain, and you get a beautiful soft light that just by itself is like very cinematic, has very soft, beautiful quality. Um, so those are like what I consider like the, the most essential tools. Got it. And there's a good blog post I remember reading uh, about how you use that shower curtain. So go check out onepersoncrew.com and scroll down on the blog and you'll find that blog post. And the, and the gear also that I, in, in, in onepersoncrew.com on the website, I have the gear broken into three different uh, groups. Funny you mentioned uh, that. Oh, Here. perfect. That's the one. Okay, perfect. So the the, the travel kit is the most Excellent. minimalist, the least amount of gear that you're gonna need. If you're gonna be like using like uh, Ryanair or one of those airlines. Let me let me pause you for a second. Yeah. Every everybody check the the offers on the side, or if you're watching this as a replay, check down in the description, the link will be there. Um, you can follow the link there to Eduardo's website to see these, but we're gonna talk our way through them right now. And I'll post in the chat too. Please continue. Great, so the, the travel kit is the most compact, most essential, the minimalist travel gear. And that's for someone who needs to fit everything in one backpack or a carry-on. The second one, the up and running, which is named for, by, that's the name from the, the ninth course, the one that is gonna go live very soon on LinkedIn, is the one person crew uh, up and running, is for people getting started with video. And m one of the challenges I, I had early on was there were so many different options. There were so many gimbals and so many lenses and so many filters and so many lights, like, and none of them are inexpensive. I mean, all this, all this gear is, is, is pricey. So you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to buy something and then realize you bought the wrong one or the outdated. Right. So having a list of the most essential gear that works, that is proven, field tested on the trenches, uh, that I, I was really looking for that. So since, since I could not find it, I created it. And that's the up and running kit. So for photographers getting into video, for filmmakers uh, getting, getting more comfortable with video, that's the kit. The next one, the cinematic look, that's also the name of the, the LinkedIn course that it's gonna be released very soon. And that's for people who either have already been shooting video for a while or are trying to enhance their production value. They, they, the, the classic situation with a lot of clients is they are comfortable shooting video, but what they see, the end result that they get and what they see on YouTube or Vimeo, there is a gap and they don't understand why. How can we make this production, increase the production value so it gets closer to what I'm seeing 
on online. And often, very often, the difference is sound and light. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's classic. So on this list, I add a few more tools that are going to help you uh, to increase the production value, enhance the production value without spending a ton of money. So those now, are kind of like the three. I love it. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for putting the care into doing this. And I want to add one more layer to the care that he put into this. You'll notice that we haven't said this particular product or that particular product. Yes, there's some Benro products in there. Edward sure. trust Benro, right? But but to make this as useful as possible for as long as possible, Eduardo, thinking ahead, the guy that he is, made lists on Amazon with all of the most recent, most current gear, so that if you see this now or later and something has changed, he's going to update it with the most current useful piece of gear to match that goal. And, and that's, that's the reason. All this gear keeps changing fairly often, right? And... Mm -hmm. For example, hard drives, the, the, the prices on hard drives keep dropping. And up to very recently, two years ago, solid state drives were kind of like out of reach. They were very expensive yeah. and the capacity was too low, 500 yeah. gigs, one terabyte max. Right. That, that That's completely gone. Like now we can get a two terabyte solid state drive for an affordable price. So that's why I keep the list on Amazon because I can add and replace right. and update models as, as, as things change, as technology evolves. Right. So click through to his website, to the gear page, choose one of the three options, and then you'll end up at an Amazon list that shows all the most current options. On his website, he has lots of other really interesting things, um, hardware, software, and books. Tell us a little bit more about the other stuff there. <laughs> that was another super frustrating thing for me, uh, the, the, the software. Uh, oh, right. I remember very early on, I mean, we're talking 2006, probably 2007. Mm -hmm. And I was very comfortable with Photoshop and Lightroom and many other photo editing applications. Right. But the first time I opened Final Cut 6, I think it was, I was like, what the hell? What's going on? Like, why the, Why do you have two windows here? What, what are all these right. things doing? And I started working with Final Cut, got very comfortable with that. But for, for many different reasons, I decided to switch to Premiere. And I could not find one person in New York City to teach me Adobe Premiere Pro at that time. And very often the comment was, uh, why do you want to do that? Like, well... I have my reasons. So going through the plugins, there are so many different things uh, that, again, I could not find one place that had all the different options listed without selling anything, without pushing anything. Right. So that's why I created that software. And it's, it's kind of like bare bones. There are maybe 20 different things. It's not, it's not pages and pages. There are 20 different things that I use almost every single day right. from platforms to license music and sound effects to um, video editing software and all the things that I consider like, essentially in my workflow are, right. are there. Right. And you mentioned Benro that, 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 that we have yeah. the Benro products and everything else. Uh -huh. And something to be very clear about all the, all the gear that I have on my website is right. I only talk about products and companies that I use and trust. I don't, I don't do anything just because. And I have been using all these different products for, I mean, since, since I started. So I don't know how many years ago. And, and the software and the books are the same. One place where I read a lot, I like reading a lot. So I wanted to compile all the books that have made a difference. Books that are worth thousands of dollars, not twenty dollars or thirty dollars, right. yeah. and and that really leave a, a mark, like a really good, provide really good education. So those are the books. Yep. Oh, and look at that right at the top. I'm looking at it right now. You put the conversations. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Great. 
Um, and then I I wanted to especially point out to everybody that there's there's one other thing that Eduardo is really extraordinarily good at. Um, and he hinted at it along during this, but um, he is a superb educator. Um, he's trusted by a lot of people uh, to help them become better at their vocation. And that's, that's creating a cinematic look, making film, making video. Um, and the courses that he has built up over time on LinkedIn Learning um, are all separate and individually valuable. And they, they can build upon each other and inform each other. So um, I think there's something for everybody there and more coming soon, as he mentioned. So uh, we'll post that link again there. I highly recommend that you, you go get yourself uh, access to these um, and, and make sure that you have an opportunity uh, to learn from Eduardo, continue learning with him because he was very generous to spend time with us today and take time out of his schedule. Um, and it'd be really wonderful if you could continue the conversation with him elsewhere and receive even more specific education from him. Uh, one, yeah. what, what, thank you for that. You're, you're, you're very generous. The, the, something that I have always tried is to stick to the point, you know, like the, with, especially with this educational content. So you will notice that not a single course is over an hour because my goal is that if you want to get better at cinematic composition or camera movement, you can learn during one lunch break. In one hour, you can watch this course and you can learn a few tricks, hopefully, that are going to make you a better filmmaker, a better storyteller. So those courses that are eight hours long 10 hours long i just don't have the patience for that so i just try to distill the best information the actionable steps that you can take the course and go and apply them tonight and we thank you for that thanks for getting to the point eduardo <laughs> it's very it's very important it is. It is. And and I don't want to ignore There's a couple of questions that we didn't answer yet. Oh, please. Um, um, one no came questions. from Lawrence. Do you pre-plan the story, especially when you're traveling? That's a great question. And it's very hard. It depends. It, the answer is it depends. If I'm, if I'm working uh, with a client for a client and I'm going on a specific project, shooting a project, yes, absolutely. Then I have a very clear, uh, not necessarily a script because it's very hard to write a script for like the documentary style thing that I do, but I have a shot list and I do a lot of research about the place, the history, the political system, places that I want to go. Uh, a great tip is if you go to, once you arrive, you go to a gift shop somewhere or a bookstore and take a look at the postcards. Uh, there's always a section about with postcards because those postcards highlight the best places and the best light from that specific location. So you oh. can then go and, 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 and capture that from, from your point of view. And so if it's for a client, absolutely. I do, I do a lot of research. If it's for personal, for a personal project, I also like to read a lot about this, the, 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 the place I'm going to visit not necessarily or not specifically for the story, but to have an educated conversation with the locals and show them respect. Mm -hmm. And when, when you go and talk to um, a, a barber or the taxi driver or whoever you're, 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 you're connecting with and you ask like, so how do you feel about the, the last election that happened three months? Are you happy with the results? And what do you think about this? candidate or the other candidate and you know what's going on right. the dynamic changes completely right. even even if even if it's hard to communicate because of the language or whatever if they they see you as someone okay this guy cares and yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna help him a little bit more and so planning the shots comes from that and a lot also i do believe which is also part of uh, the conversations the book often the footage 
will tell you what it wants to be. You can have a very clear idea, a very good script, but when you're working with the footage, it, it will tell you if, you, if you let it, it will tell you, I want to be this. I, this is the story I want to become. So you have to also be open to that and to that, to be flexible enough to, to understand what the project wants to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, if anybody else has any other questions that they'd like to ask, now is a great time to drop them in the chat. Um, but we do want to say thank you for your time. Oh, uh, thank you. This is great. It's really, really been fun talking with you, Eduardo. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, I like, I like having conversations with you. I'm glad we got to do it in public with other people around. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that there's more commerce in your area. <laughs> all, those, all those flights going through that's awesome um i definitely encourage all of you to follow the links in the chat or down in the description please go to his website subscribe for his blog you might get a prompt when you get there um check out his gear page and please go get one at least one of his linkedin courses in an hour you will be better at what you do i promise and you. feel free to ask questions uh, after yep. every blog post I, I leave a section for comments or you can find me on instagram or twitter yep. Or my, my, I mean, I've, I'm, my my email is very public, so feel free to connect and like, hey, I didn't get this part, or I'm debating between these two things. Just feel free. I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy to, to help others. Yep. So thank you to Damon and Wendy and Nuno and Lawrence and all of the people who came and left comments and uh, from all over the world. You had a very global audience today. Very good. Yes. So thank you to everybody. We appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next webinar. We'll see you online. And Eduardo, thanks for being our guest. Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing this. We this hope awesome. we'll have you on again. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.